Hey everybody, uh, it's Bust with Busted Strategies number 26. Jumping into another bot draft. And uh, let's see what shows up here. And so, uh, interesting little set of cards. The, you know, as you kind of take a peek, there are reasonable blue cards like Phantom Carriage, Gale Drifter are both fine. They're nothing I'm really like amped about first picking. There is a removal spell in the Midnight Ambush, but this is kind of one of the, the weaker ones, right? We'd rather uh, open with something like Defense Straight or Eaten Alive. Uh, but the big one I'm looking at here is Augur of Autumn. Like, I'm not the hugest fan of, of leading out with green. Uh, but this card is just, like, ultra, ultra powerful. The, if you're playing against a deck that's just light on removal or something like blue-white or blue-green where they don't have a lot of just permanent removal spells, uh, just, just being able to play lands off the top of your deck and then potentially creatures off the top uh, is, is just gigantic. This is a, a monstrous, monstrous card. Uh, even if you're if you just like play it, you get a land off the top, and then your opponent defense straights it. That's still a pretty decent deal, uh, and so I think that's where we want to be. There are a lot of reasonable green cards that could potentially wheel in this pack as well, between Burly Breaker and Grizzly Ghoul. Ideally, something like the Grizzly Ghoul. So we'll kind of keep the blue or the green black idea in mind. Uh, but you know, if we end up in, in something that can take advantage of this, that would be that would be cool. Okay. So another interesting set of cards. I'm not going to start with Curse of Surveillance here. Uh, uh, that's a card that I like to pick up like pick six or pick seven. And it's fine. It's just not a card that can ever claw you back from victory. Uh, it's something that you either need to be ahead on board to just lock up a game or at kind of like a, a safe point against some kind of weird slow draw. It is extremely powerful, but uh, it's not something I, I like to start with. And so... Uh, interesting. I mean, we c did consider green black. There was the uncommon uh, uh, bear, grizzly bear thing in, in the previous pack that would be really nice if it wheeled. Uh, and then otherwise, in the green cards, we just have eccentric farmer. And so, kind of like the previous pack, there's not enough blue to make me want to dive in. I don't want to dive in with Curse of Surveillance or Gale Drifter. Uh, I think I want to roll the dice on green black here. We we'll just uh, snatch up this Diagraph Rebirth uh, and see if we can't end up in something powerful in that way. Ooh, some more big ones here in the Shadow Beast sighting. I feel like I see the, the Winterhorn Blessing. It is strong, but I think we have to take the Shadow Beast sighting here. We don't know what flavor of green we're going to end up in. Uh, there's nothing that makes us want to jump back into the Esper wheelhouse, and so happy enough with the Shadow Beast sighting. When it comes to Shadow Beast sightings, I do prefer to be in blue-green, uh, so you can uh, ramp into these on the third turn. Uh, if we're in like green black, then I'm usually only wanting like two of them, unless we have a bunch of uh, a bunch of mill to try to get them into our graveyard. Okay, okay. Well, we're we're going places. This is horrible, right? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Yeah, something about not being able to play spells. I guess you can cycle it at some point, but yeah, not not dealing with that today. So as far as these go, uh, I don't. I think green-white is not where we want to land, right? If you're looking, uh, if you're like, I've got some green cards, let's end up in green-white. Well, I mean, we only really have one green card at this point. Uh, we, we could, could t potentially still end up in green-white. I think that would be okay. But I'm looking at the Unblinking Observer here. This is the one that's going to play the best with the Shadow Beast sighting. Uh, and I'm, I'm kind of interested in, in packing that one. Uh, it's just... How do we... How do we look at this? Like, I'm not taking our green card here. Defend the Celestis is a little too weak. Uh, and then if we're going to... The, the pack comes down to, do we want Unblinking Observer, Chaplain of Alms, or Gavany Trapper? And it's like, I'm leaning towards just taking the Unblinking Observer. But, I mean, the the, the Augur of Autumn does play fantastically in, in green-white as well. Maybe we do just look to pick up the Chaplain of Alms. I'd like a, a little bit more knowledge before we're, we're snatching up Unblinking Observers. Okay, okay, well, the the green-white cards do continue. Uh, Donhart Mentor is a fantastic late-game play. A lot of decks can't answer it. We're not going to play in white-black. Uh, there is the green-black option in the Morkut Behemoth, but I, I think the Mentor is our, our pick in this one. Okay, okay, so... I, I think we are getting like closer and closer to just being in green-white, but I don't want the Candle Trap. I don't like Candle Trap in green-white. Uh, it... It plays better in decks that are attacking with a bunch of flyers, and so uh, we'll let that one go for now. I'm just going to snatch up this Snarling Wolf. Help us play to, to more of an early game. Ooh, Dualcraft Trainer. Okay. 
well, I think that could probably just lock us into green-white. Uh, we we could, I mean, if we had a little bit more into green-black, I mean, there's just such good green cards here in the, and the green-black cards in the Dread Horde Eccentric Farmer, but the, the Dualcraft Trainer is just so ultimately so super powerful. Uh, happy to, to snatch that one up. Oh, and just a second one? <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, green-white it is. Peck 9, the, uh, the green-black zombie wolf didn't table anyways, so that's okay. Let's just pick up the bear here. I'm not a huge fan of, um, uh, of Ritual Guardian, and we don't have any two drops up to this point, so uh, the, the wolf is a little bit more defensive than I would like. Oh, okay. I'm feeling pretty good about the, the, this idea now that the high-quality cards like Cathar Commando are making the wheel. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to put the Ritual Guardian down here. Pestilent Wolf is a card that we're not really wanting to play, uh, but these are potential curve fillers. Plummet. Okay. All right. That was a a, a bit odd, but I, I think it we, we kind of got ourselves pointed in a good direction now. So old stick fingers, you're not going to make the cut today. <laughs> if if that if that zombie zombie bear had wheeled, I, I would consider the green black here, but. I, I just don't think that that's going to be a thing today. So amongst these green-white cards, I'm looking towards the Bereaved Survivor. Uh, it's powerful enough. Uh, it's not super strong, but it's okay. Uh, I don't want to run out here and start stacking Gavany Silversmith because we already have three four drops. And so I'm going to go to the bottom end of the curve and then kind of hope that we wheel a Timberland Guide here. Okay, well, I think with this, we want the Harvest Tide Sentry. I tend to be more of a fan of the Sentry as we're assembling these uh, more aggressive style decks than we would get out of the uh, the Lunark uh, veteran. So, Sentry's fine. This pack sucks. <laughs> I think we just gotta take the duel for dominance here. We don't have too many units that play well with it. Just kind of the Shadow Beast sightings, but uh, it's, it's a removal spell. Gotta, gotta have them at some point here. Okay. This looks like our first Flare of Faith. I'd like to pick up a couple of copies of this uh, if possible, but uh, just kind of the premier combat trick for green-white. Very easy take. Here, nothing too exciting. A premier, uh, a sort of premier two-drop in the Cathar Commando. Got to fill out our curve. Now we're up to some turds. <laughs> nothing we're really interested in playing here. We'll pick up the Candlelit Calvary. It's a, it's a, it's a pretty weak late-game play. Uh, probably won't play it, but we we have some options with it. Man, look at all these red cards. Jeez. Nobody's drafting red today. I mean, is there a world where we ever end up in green-red? It's just like whenever we're seeing pick seven Moon Ranger slashes, I, I think we have to, like, stop and consider uh, do we ever end up in werewolves. I, I think it's it's pretty unlikely at this point. I'm gonna take the Moon Ranger Slash and just kind of see how this goes, because we're never playing hedge, the Hedge Mask, whatever this thing is called. But there's a, a lot of potential for 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 strong things with this Moon Ranger Slash. But the the red here isn't enough to make me want to switch. We'll we'll take the the Soul Griff Guide. The Seas the Storms as well. These red cards are just so late. Do you ever end up in some kind of like green red spells deck? How does that ever look? If, like with with Shadow Beast sightings and Seize the Storms and Moon Rager slashes. I'm gonna I'm gonna consider it. I'm gonna add the Seize the Storm here, and see uh, and see how things uh, play out. Look at this. We got a Flame Channeler. Is it happening? Is the green red spells gonna be a thing? Still belong over here. Let's let's make a let's make a red pile now. <laughs> All right, we've got a red pile now. Famished foragers, geek and land in the red pile. There's a there's a maybe with you. I'm gonna play green red spells. Maybe the elementalist is okay. Oh boy, what are we getting ourselves into? Uh, I mean, I don't feel like we've missed out on anything if we're if we're wanting to stick into um, green white. But that, I mean, that was a a lot of potential power that we just picked up here in these red cards and so uh, still there's not a lot in this pack that makes me really want to switch i've never even seen this card what is this thing choose two creatures two creature cards and your graveyard opponent chooses one put that one in your hand put the other one on the battlefield and attack yeah 
that, that, that could be good in some in somebody's deck <laughs> just not just not this one here uh, with these i'm looking to pick up the eccentric farmer uh, if we end up in green white it's just okay if we do piece together this green red monstrosity uh, it, it should be uh, particularly good uh, and hopefully something like the fangbrand brigand will table given how late we were seeing the the moon rager slashes i don't think that that's um, uh, that's absurd to think may happen Okay, but the good green continues. Uh, I uh, This is tough. Like, uh, at the end of the day, I, I think we want the Hound Tamer. Uh, we can take advantage of this reasonably well uh, as we have these land-generating abilities. Uh, and then uh, we're just missing out on Shadow Beast Sighting. I think this is okay. I mean, if we are going to end up in green-red, we probably do want the Shadow Beast Sighting, but the Hound Tamer is ultimately uh, just a little bit more powerful. Okay. So, I mean, we get, we, uh, there are just like a handful of options as to where we can play multiple colors. Uh, we can play three colors. We could play Naya. Uh, if I would want like Terramorphic Expanses to go with these eccentric farmers, though. I think if we're going to end up in green-white, we're looking towards things like this uh, this Ritual of Hope. But, I mean, let's take another farmer. Not playing Unruly Mob. Ritual of Hope is something that would be like quite good in green-white with, with just the go-wide strategies. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's like, I really just want to play this red spells deck. I think we need to kind of get in our heads that we're not actually going to do that. But uh, I think I want the eccentric farmer anyways over top of this Ritual of Hope. Okay, Shadow Beast Sighting is a pretty easy take here. Uh, we're not missing out on much. There is a Might of the Old Ways, but I don't think it's ultimately uh, a requirement for our deck. And then... Search party captain. Like the the only concern I have here is like uh, if we're being real, we're gonna end up in green white. Uh, we can like add pestilent wolf in, but we're still you know kind of light on our two drops. And so I, I think we're kind of just stuck taking another pestilent wolf here, uh, whereas we would like to add in the search party captain. But we already have like four four drops, so I, I don't feel too bad about letting the party captain go here. Okay, so what's our interactivity look like? I don't really want to be playing Silver Bolts. Kind of looking at this as just being like we take the candle, let Calvary out, and put the Soul, Gu the soul Guide Griff in. But, I mean, our removal is pretty weak. We just have the Duel for Dominance. We've been really greedy on passing on a bunch of Silver Bolts. I, th I think we just need to add in the Sun Gold Barrage here. Okay. Look at these. Look at all these cards like Burn the Accursed. <laughs> I mean, there is a world where you could want to splash one of those, but I'm just going to take the second combat trick in Might of the Old Ways here. Got to gotta get out of our head <laughs> that, these, that this green-red deck was here. Uh, let, me, let me go ahead and start moving them over. I think it was a, a reasonable idea, but we, we didn't see like the, the quantity of high-quality red cards that we saw at the end of Pack 2 there in Pack 3. Oh my god, I hate this sideboard thing so much. Ritual Guardian can come out. Okay, so now that we've got that out of the way, uh, not too much exciting here. Whenever playing Unruly Mob, uh, I just moved the other Ritual Guardian out. We're not playing Tapping at the Window. Let's just add the Uncommon. Here's Party Captain. I mean, I don't think we play it. It's a little expensive, but it's fine. Here's a second Sun Gold Barrage if we want. I think I just want to continue with the combat tricks, though, and take Might of the Old Ways. We can, we can pretty easily take advantage of those in this style of deck. Sanctifier. Not going to see anything the rest of the way. Oh, deal for your secrets. You're an uncommon. You get, you get yourself in here. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry we had to abandon the potential really sweet green-red spells deck, but <laughs> we, we just didn't have enough of the, of the red cards show up there at the end of the day. And so... I, I think we've got ourselves in a pretty decent space here. I think we do want this to be a 17 land deck if we're going to be playing 5-4 drops, so I'm okay with that. Uh, where do the cuts kind of look like? There's Snarling Wolf, which is pretty mediocre. The Pestilent Wolves are mediocre, but I, I think we're going to need to keep these in our deck just to have like the, the quantity of 2 drops that we need. So let me see. Let me move these back in. I think we're going to want to play both Might of the Old Ways. Kind of looking at just taking out Things, I think I want to keep the one Sun Gold Barrage. 
Is our top end good enough? We could take out Soul Guide Griff. I think we have enough kind of late ground poundy plays to where we don't really need that. Flare of Faith. Kind of want to keep the Might of the Old Ways as card draw. I like. I kind of even like these Snarling Wolves because they help us get Covens. That's, I think that's fine. Eccentric Farmer can stay. Do we ever just take this to, to 16 land? We do have the two Eccentric Farmers. <laughs> it makes them a little worse when you're cutting the land out, but... I think it's okay. We have an Augur of Autumn as well. Alright, I've convinced myself. Do we want to do non seven? We got a double green and then a bunch of green early plays, or would you rather do eight and eight? Or uh, how many units do we have? 17? Let's just figure out a unit to take. I think I want to keep everything here to the right. Oh, we got tons of units in this deck. I want to keep the survivor. The Donhart mentor is fine. All right, we're being we're being real and keeping seventeen land in the deck. Let's just take out a pestilent wolf. That leaves us with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's not enough. Has to be something up the curve. It's like I'm looking at the eccentric farmers as being weak, but let's take out the party captain. We have enough to do with our mana without including that. Between having uh, the auger of autumn to play a ton of stuff, having Donhart mentors to pop off with a bunch of mana, uh, the shadow be sighting to flash back. I, I think we're okay in that sense. All right, let's get to it. I've already messed up my numbers this week. I just had a horrible draft before this. I just, I just quit it out after the first game. It was, <laughs> it was not interesting. The draft wasn't interesting. Nothing came together with it. I just tossed that one in. So, messed messed up our stats for the week. But it is what it is. And I, uh, I don't feel really good about keeping a hand like this, like. What are our good draws? We have 9 Forests, 10 with the Chaplain, 12, 13 with the Cathar Commando, sort of 14 with the Bereaved Survivor. It's like half of our deck, we get to draw it twice. Uh, oh my god, well, this at least has power cards in it. It's not a good start. It's not a good start as a kitty. We got the kitties out here helping us though. All right, we got to make sure we play our forest next. I don't think we'll play the Augur of Autumn on the third turn, but we want to potentially have that option. Got the kitties helping us. She didn't help us draft, but she's here for the games. All right, Smoldering Egg. Oh, can't play you. Where's the farmer? There we go. Oh, oh my gosh. This kitty is dumb. <laughs> She's getting getting stuck over here. You just need pets. Dumb kitties don't need pets. Only smart kitties want pets. You're right. <laughs> Okay, so we'll get the forest down. Uh, not too much going on here. I mean, I think we're safe to just add the survivor. They're not in a good spot to keep attacking. We do have a Cathar Commando in our graveyard. So uh, we get, we're get we starting to build up here. And the, the thing with the survivor is it's like hopefully an enticing enough card for them to, uh, to, to try to blow up before we add the Augur of Autumn. But I probably don't want to play the Autumn until like turn five. So we can protect it with the might of the old ways. Lots of smoldering eggs happening at Worlds too. I played a bit of it, played a bit and constructed with it, uh, super hierarchy. But I mean, if you're playing, uh, if you're playing time warp, then <laughs> you can kind of, kind of pick and choose easier spots to make that dragon uh, do its thing. What up, kitty? Welcome to being on the internet. Our opponent give up? What's happening? Oh, there we go, Timberland Guide. Hmm. The 
this works off mana cost, right? Yeah. Ever just protect our Dauntless Avenger here? I mean, I kind of like it. We have really good cards in our graveyard. Do we ever duel for dominance any of this stuff? Like, the thing with duel for dominance is it does... Uh, flip his cards back. So, I mean, I, I don't really want to be popping Smoldering Egg, though. That sounds kind of sucky. I do like flipping this unit back down, though. I think this is okay. Like, it, it, it's not the best use we're ever going to get out of a Duel for Dominance, but it opens up the board from this unit and turns the Infiltrator back to... Uh, is he already non-flipped? Is he on his, good, his bad side anyways? Maybe it was. I think this is still okay, though. We're looking strong. Can't be super happy about this Avenger attacking again. Flare of Faith. That's a juicy one. Oh, hang on, hang on. It's gonna it's gonna mess up our mana. Nope. And then I'm pretty sure I'm happy with the double block here. We're going to lose the Augur of Autumn. Uh, but we, we are, like, so far ahead uh, at, at this point with having all these dual craft trainers and such. I think it's okay. Let's go to attack him with one. Or maybe we just... Like, I, I'm not, definitely not taking eight. I'm not excited about taking four, but I could see taking four be okay. I'm also okay with just kind of like throwing away Eccentric Farmer at this stage, but I think we have like enough cards in hand to overwhelm what he's doing. But the other kind of like potential, okay, I was going to say like the other kind of potential thing we could look at being able to do is just get these dual craft trainers down. We're, we're just going to blow up this board though. Dawnheart Mentor is going to give us two. That gives us a coven. Here is the dual craft trainer. Look at all that power. All right, I feel like we've won this one. <laughs> uh, not a bad collection of things happening out there. So, all right, as we can hopefully not mess this game up. I mean, of course, the things we can stop and talk about. You have to feel horrible for Matt Sperling if you've been watching the Worlds. What a brutal, brutal tiebreaker match that he had to play um, to, to miss out on the win and end. That is uh, as salty as we get over some of these plays that we make. Dude has the the realistic uh, need to <laughs> to just be 
ultimately salty. Like it, the, these people, like I know magic isn't his career. I know like dude's a lawyer and he just kind of uh, plays at a top level, but I, it's so soul crushing to be so invested in a tournament and have it end like it did for him. Um, uh, he he at least seemed to in the in the pictures to be taking it well, but I'm, I'm sure he was dying on the inside. Uh, but anyways, on to this one. Uh, like, is this hand good if we draw a forest in like the first three turns? Yeah, I think so. I think we can hang on to this. So let's keep the seven. This is one of these hands that kind of like falls apart if our Kathar Commando just dies. Like, if we don't draw the land uh, and we're just stuck with all these combat tricks and no units on the board, a lot of potential for this hand to suck a lot. But if we draw a forest and get to draw out of this, it's uh, it's powerful enough. And we did draw the forest. Are we willing to just trade the Kathar Commando for the Outlet, Outland Liberator? I don't really want to. Like, we've got this Donhart Mentor to give us a coven, and then we have these two Might of the Old Ways. I would like to uh, just be playing these Might of the Old Ways and drawing cards in the process. So I think we'll give this a turn uh, and then try to extract some real value out of our hand. Even if he... Uh, so even if he goes to Knight, we can still handle this. Has to be a flare of faith, though. Okay. Not a big deal with the old green black werewolves, whatever's happening here. Whoa, he's got blue in here. Salty werewolves, or the salty werewolves, whatever, you, however you prefer to say it. Like something's about to happen. Gonna do gonna do something here. What what does duel for dominance even do? It's gonna deal three damage to it? We still get to like draw the cards and everything? So at the end of the day, I mean, at the end of the day, I'd probably like to just hang on to this Donhart Mentor, if we're being real about it. I mean, it's it's really close to having this, uh, this Covened ability. We have the one land in hand. It can carry a lot of weight being able to just threaten this plus three, plus three. Fuck. Well, at the end of the day, we just traded two cards for two cards, but... It was, a, it was much better if we were getting to kill off his dudes. But I mean, we're still close. If we if we get like right, this ability to give plus three plus three to something uh, is quite powerful against these. Probably no attack from opponent. I think this is enough. Like, uh, it, our, our board isn't good enough to attack with, like, three things. Uh, I don't want to be just, like, trading out all of our stuff. But I, I feel like two tokens is probably enough. So now we get to keep our coven uh, and then potentially be scary.
But right, just attacking with one token is pretty ignorable. I'm kind of surprised he blocked there. I mean, maybe he just wanted to send it to Knight so that he could draw a card with filament stage. But it's happy with how that played out. That's more along the lines of what I was expecting there. <laughs> Try to double up on spells here. Nope. Interesting. He's going to try and draw cards with the Sage. I want to go ahead and add the land. If they have some kind of combat trick here, uh, you know, to say plays a plus two plus two on Bounding Wolf. I want to be able to both add a plus one plus one token with the Untamed Pup and be able to Sun Gold Barrage, uh, should that be a necessity. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> All right, GG. Okay, I was getting a lot of Telephone notifications. I had to check on my fantasy teams. Shit's brutal. <laughs> the thing with fantasy, one of the leagues I play in just has like the most ridiculous quarterback scoring. It's like they went through uh, here. Uh, it's hands. Like this, I guess this is keepable. We're going to have a coven on three and keep attacking with sentry. All right, this is just like, this is one of these games where in like our top three, we draw like one or two land. We're just like completely hosed. But if if we can manage to draw like two of three spells in the top three cards and the hands tend to like shape up okay. No, but in, in fantasy, it was like, um, I don't know if they just like got drunk and picked all of like the, the scoring that you could for quarterbacks, but it's like there's points per completion. There's points for like bonus points for passing yards, uh, passing touchdowns that were six points a piece. And so... Like, on average, it's like Patrick Mahomes scores like 50, 55 points in a week. And then uh, that, that's just like so ultra important to have a really good quarterback. Uh, and uh, I was I was playing Russell Wilson. It's like it's a keeper league. And so a lot of people just like keep the good ones. But there's always just like so much value in being able to like pick up a, a, a Dak Prescott or a Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's kind of like the, the bottom tier in that league. And then... Uh, his finger getting blown up was was completely devastating, um, and so <laughs> it's like I'm without him for the next four to six weeks. And then my backup was Jameis Winston. You know, I was kind of figured he might go thirty for thirty this year, uh, but uh, that didn't happen either. So it's like I'm playing Carson Wentz next week. Carson Wentz like ceilings at forty points, <laughs> and it's fucking painful. But all right, back to the action here. What are we willing to trade a startle for? Uh, th there is a world where they just don't have a play anyways, but uh, I think like we can add the Mentor. We're gonna hit a Coven. And then he, he just like can't block our Sentry. And then if he has the Startle play onto the Chaplain of Alms, we aren't missing out too much. So I think that's okay. Alright, so we still can't block our Harvest Tide Sentry. Now we have to start making decisions as far as, say, like, Bereaved Survivor is concerned. Um, like, like, I think I'm okay to just throw Chaplain of Arms in front of the Falcon Abomination and let that go. It's just the downside here is um, once this Awakener becomes a 4-4, we start really missing out. Um, on, on decent attacks. It's like, I kind of want to get the Eccentric Farmer going, because we're going to need the, um... We're, we're going to need this, like, plus three, plus three bonus relatively soon.
How bad is this if he just passes it back to us? Like, when, he, when he's obviously just going to block with the Awakener. Hmm. Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. This isn't amazing. If we had if we had the um, the flare faith, this game would be an absolute blowout at this point. But uh, we just have the might of the old ways, so it's not not nearly as good. Do want to just clear out his board though. Alright, so we lost a lot of our reach, and then we lost our dual craft trainer. So I'm not like feeling as confident about winning this game, but uh, like, the thing I was thinking in the back of my head was like, wouldn't it be sweet if he just plays like a digraph horde? <laughs> so we, we do have the tools to handle a digraph horde here. Maybe this will be enough to carry us on to the, uh, the rest of the way. Oh man. Oh man. He is getting invested. Okay, maybe we can do it. Maybe. I have to assume he's just gonna add his eccentric farmer or his uh, crawl from the cellar here as well. Uh, we or his crawl from the cellar, his ecstatic awakener. So if we draw a unit that can give us a coven, then we can win, right? We can put. The duel for dominance on our Chaplain of Alms hit the Ecstatic Awakener, uh, and we did it. We did it, team. So this will put a creature you control, creature you don't. Now we got it. Well, could have a bounce spell. <laughs> if he has a bounce spell, this is extremely unfortunate, but... Okay. That's how you do it. Get him. <laughs> All right, cruising on along. Yeah, that was the brutal part of fantasy football. Uh, so we'll we'll see. We'll see if we can recover. There's nobody out there that's any good worth taking. <laughs> It's kind of painful. But all right, hands like this, this is reasonable. As dudes, we can put on the board. Combat tricks, we can put on the dudes. <laughs> what more could one ask for? So, I mean, I think we can just start with the sentry. I'm not sure. Like, you usually, a lot of times, you just want to put your worst unit out here because you assume that's the one that's most likely to get interacted with. Let's see, this feels feels better now, I guess. Doesn't want the trade. Okay. So now we can get a dual craft trainer going. And then these combat tricks are of course fantastic with dual craft trainers. If your opponent does a bunch of cutesy shit <laughs> and you get a, a an unblocked attack with double strike and a bunch of uh, combat tricks, pretty, pretty sweet. Right. Why are you highlighting our harvest tide sentry? No one asked you to do that. 
Makes it 4-4. Four, four. Like, this is a pretty scary space in terms of him having to flip the switch. I, I don't think we can attack here. Let's just add the Shadow Beast sighting. This is kind of okay if he flips the switch on it. It's like, I, I kind of want to figure out if his, his play is, like, just making the 4-4, or if he has, uh, like, combat tricks or spells or something. He had a, he had a spell, which is fine. We kind of needed to figure out uh, what we are getting ourselves involved with before we start dropping dual craft trainers and hound tamers. It's going to be a digraph horde. We're potentially lining that play up to where he doesn't respect our board, and then we get to uh, we get to dual craft trainer for a win. We have to, we have to see how this plays out. Okay, he's not he's not the aggro here. I don't. I'm completely okay with what's happening there. You gotta remember, this gives our, our wolves and werewolves trample. Uh, so, we, we can't potentially give a double strike with the dual craft trainer. And then, it's not a human anymore, right? So it loses out on its plus three, plus three. We can only give it plus two, plus two with Might of the Old Ways, but it's like we can make the pup an eight. Let's see how scary this turns out. He's got the two mana, so, I mean, there are quite a few cards he could have here to, to cause us some problems. Olivia's Midnight Ambush is at the minus 13 mode. Another bounce spell is annoying, uh, but I mean, very, very good potential. We can just lethal this turn. So we're hitting for, as far as this goes, we'd be hitting for four, five, six. We could get up a little bit, but let's just try and clear out the board. This will also turn into daytime, so the Stalking Predator is going to shrink next turn. Very challenging for them to deal 12 at us. Feeling good squad. The downside, I mean, we did lose both uh, our Coven and the Hound Tamer flip. I mean, we can, before combat, put a plus one, plus one counter on something, and then that'll give us our Coven back. So, that, I mean, that's probably what we're going to be looking to do here. Hopefully we can just finish off the game on this next attack. I don't think there's ever a way they kill us here, right? He's got 8 damage on board. There's no blue-black ways to just amp up his damage. So if he, if he gets clever and just swings with everything, I feel pretty okay just taking all of it.
But I guess the question we'd have to ask ourselves is could we uh, still win the game without a dual craft trainer on our next attack? We're pretty close. Sorry, right, we just I think we, we just win. Oh, you have menace. Okay. Takes us to three. Are we supposed to just not block? <laughs> that was the path to victory. Hey, I've overclicked stuff before. I get it. I get it. All right, and we win this next one. It'll catapult us into diamond. I'm feeling like we ought to be able to hit mythic this month. Uh, we'll see. I, I I ran into a hit in diamond uh, during week two. We're in week four now. Um, and then I kind of hit a wall as far as being able to progress was concerned, but I feel like we've advanced quite a bit. Even, like, as much shenanigans and, and challenges we had in this draft with trying to determine if we wanted to be in, in green-red spells, I, I think we're, you know, kind of seeing some of those angles and and really improving uh, in, in every draft. So I can see, our, see us getting ourselves there. Going to answer our basking group, Walla? Don't approve of that kind of thing, man. Don't be highlighting our root walla. He's like, I'll, I'll trade the mana for your unit if that's what you're what you're gonna offer up. Hit the chaplain of alms, but but did not hit a land. Okay. It's kind of a tempting block, like um, just just to potentially like take away their turn from them, but it's probably a little. A little too greedy to to look at things like that. Our attacks continue to be good, though. Fantasy notifications. What's this? Got to be touchdowns, right? Let's see. Let's see who got this. Oh, fuck. Just people being hurt. <laughs> Why do I even bother? Why do we bother? Then who knows what life is going to be like tomorrow. I mean, with the, the potential of the Chiefs to be 2-3, and three, like playing against the, the Bills are a definitely losable game. So I, I worry about that. This, I mean, it feels like our dual craft trainer might just be getting hit with a... Um, uh, what, what are they called? The... Midnight Ambush, Midnight Raid, whatever the burn, the burn spell is, but I can't imagine what kind of weird draw they have where they're not just adding anything here. Like, he should have, with the burn spell, just killed our Dualcraft Trainer pre-combat. Like, if we, get, if we get to come into our next turn and, like, untap with a Flare of Faith, uh, I'm going to feel, like, really confident about being able to win this game. Just actual do nothing? Are you playing like three colors or something? I graph horde. Okay. Oh, losing it on the Kathar Commando from our graveyard kinda sucks as we're about to play Bereaved Survivor, but I think this is okay. Can't, that can't be it, right? We we he didn't have an answer to our dual craft trainer last turn. I'm not gonna have an answer this turn. Double duels, right? The dual duels, dual dual craft, double duels, dueling duels. <laughs>
The duel and them deuces. You're right, you gotta say deuce given any opportunity. It's a slang term for a poop. <laughs> You're not, not from America and don't know what a deuce is. That's a poop. <laughs> Okay, there's a more good behemoth. Can we just win this turn with our with our with our duel our duels our deuce, deuces? <laughs> I, I think we get to attack with everything here. I and mean, if he tries to get greedy on his blocks, we can just kill him. A green and a white. Okay. They're one short on our other dual craft trainer. It was you get plus three plus three with that the, with the flare faith, but it would have been a damage short. Tough for him to get out of this. I mean, what, there, there's like the red thing that makes devils? Is that in this set? The AoE, like deal five damage to everything or put the three devils on board? Can't remember if that's in this set or not. Got him with the duel the dueling deuces. Dueling him up right into diamond. The dueling deuces of diamond. Alright. Five wins up to this point. Cruise it on out. Finish this one off. We might get to watch some football after. <laughs> I was, uh, the the way the day went today, it was like I got to watch the Jets game. Like what a what a treat for anybody. They get to watch the the Jets and the and the Jaguars play, or no, it's the Jets and the and the Falcons. It's the worst teams in the game. Sorry for all you English folks that made their way to to Wembley Stadium to watch the two worst NFL teams <laughs> to do battle with each other. But uh, it's tough. I made the fantasy mistake of picking up Jamison Crowder. Uh, I, I usually have I had this like long standing rule of just not playing any players from the Browns. Uh, but now that they're in the the Baker Mayfield era, there's you know reasonable players on the Browns. Been huge fan of Nick Chubb in terms of fantasy output and wiener jokes. Uh, but now that uh, they they've moved on, we've got other teams that uh, that that are that are just the the no plays, and that's the Jets. I, I felt horrible picking up Jamison Crowder and both playing him, but injuries haven't been good to my team this year, and so he got to he got to he got to make the cut today. And, Put up a big six points. Okay, against blue white. Sifters discarding sifters, sure. And I if he wants to block, I'll I'll just spend the mana. I mean We're having trouble being aggressive on this board anyways, so. Let's just go ahead and get the value where we can. Same thing? Okay. Alright. <laughs> I guess maybe you don't have anything else to do. It's so weird. Are we going to continue on? Is this going to be the highest value Snarling Wolf of 2021? Nope. You tried, boss. You tried. <laughs> I 
does give us some time to, you know, find a white mana or something. Like, I'm curious what the makeup of your hand looks like to where you're just trying to prevent the Snarling Wolf damage. Like, I'm really surprised they didn't just fall to 18. All right, we're doing it. <laughs> spend, spend that mana on the wolf. We don't got it. Don't got anything else. It's so weird. I, I don't. Like, does this get flipped to switched? Do we have to like worry about vanquish the fallen? Is that what the new problem is now? Gonna get vanquished. I mean, that's what it feels like. Yeah. All right. Well, we're covened if if we pick up a white. Nope, not gonna happen. counter spells come on dude come on no flip the switch all right <laughs> interesting pre-combat what just to take away a coven No, we can't do this thing to where we can uh, we can might of the old ways a um, one of his units to give it plus two health, and then we can look to uh, Sun Gold Barrage it. I don't, don't think that's you know going to be a line today, but you got the potential for that kind of thing. So how do we ever win this game? Th this is certainly still a winnable game. Uh, I'm looking at. Uh, we Shadow Beast Sighting, so we get the 4-4 on board. Next turn, we can Cathar Commando. Can we do all... I guess that's what we got to see is can we do all of this? Because we have to get Trample as well. Does this give Trample? Yeah. So next turn, we have to have the mana to give this Trample. So we have to have the 6 mana play next turn. So we, we have to Cathar Commando now. Well, not now. We're going to do it on his turn, but... Okay. No blocks? What's that? What are you, what are you hidden? What? What? Are we not in his end step? Why would you do that? Okay. Ah, uh, man, we didn't draw land. Uh, are we 
he's still lethal. Ten. One time dealer. <laughs> One time, like uh, that. That why he geist waved his own his own card was beyond me. Like he, he could have hit the Don Hart mentor and and just completely shut down this kind of play. I think we might have got this one. Looks like it. Nice, nice. We didn't, we shouldn't have won that one, but <laughs> take a, take them where we can get them. Sometimes you make a little oopsies. Yeah, that geist wave. I mean, that would have just bounced our own unit. Wait on the the big double striking plus three plus three guy to come through. All of that seems better than bouncing your own card. But I understand it. I, I've gotten tunnel vision before. Bring out the curve. We're looking to play the sentry after this, so uh, we'll try to make an attack. Much like the previous game, if he wants to, you know, make the trade, then by all means, uh, we'll make the trade. But but here, I'm I'm leaning towards making a block on Festival Crasher. It shouldn't be like super scary in this kind of deck, but uh, I, I think we have to give these respect. Like, a lot of the a lot of the, like, vampire cards I don't really care about, but I think that's one that we want to come in and, and try and stop. I'm also not planning on attacking this turn. I just want to add the Eccentric Farmer. Um, completely whiffed, but um, like, the, the play I worry about with the deck like this coming out on turn 4 would be, uh, like, they get to play the Vampire Mana Maker uh, and, and turn that into something. This does kind of suck if he's got Combat Trick. But uh, I think that this is still one of these matchups to where if we just if we just get time, we're going to be okay. We have a ton of value in our hand. I mean, it does suck to lose Hound Tamer and team, but yeah, this is fine. Can't block. Okay. Give it a turn. I don't suspect this dual craft trainer is long for the world, but let's see what he can do. Gonna start doing. His blocks aren't good here. We can first strike down his arrogant outlaw if he double blocks. So he's about to get <laughs> about to get domed. I assume this means he didn't draw another land. I don't. I don't know why he's highlighting our uh, eating the life. Okay, it's like I don't know why he's highlighting our four four. Interesting. He takes the four four over the likes of Dualcraft Trainer. We can just give it double strike and start attacking with it. Uh oh. That's not cool. I thought we were being friends and stuff out here.
Uh-oh, he's drawn his fourth land. Feeling less good about this. Oh. Okay, okay, this is gonna have to start dealing. He's gonna have to start dealing with Pestilent Wolf. Up to five mana now. He has to be able to play a big boy this turn. Yeah, burn the accursed is not good. Not good, I tell you. Okay, so we'll take this trade. We may just take the damage, yeah. We can Shadow Beast. I was curious if on that turn we should, we should have just attacked with both, but it feels pretty bad if he has the, um... Has the 3-2 on board. These attacks aren't good. They look better now, but I, I think we want to get at least like two, maybe three Shadow Beasts on the board before we start to attack. We aren't quite ready to threaten lethal here, but like if we just like attack with the one and he gets the good uh-oh. Uh-oh. These things have lifelink as well. It's kind of scary. I get to draw cards. Ugh. That's a bit of a game changer. So now does our double attack feel better? We're, we're definitely going to follow up with the Shadow Beast sighting, so that gives us one block. Um, like, I really just... I don't like any of these. I'll feel better about it next turn. It just seems like if, if at the end of the day, like, oh, Jesus... Jeez, oh, that's scary. NGL, that's a little on the scary side. But right, at, at the end of the day, if like he trades for a Shadow Beast for a Brimstone Vandal or a Flame Channeler and then uh, gets to draw a card off the Opportunist, like that's all pretty scary to me. Got to take down the Vandal. He's already drawn his card for the turn, so that's not too scary. We have an additional blocker in the Farmer. Feels good to just come out here and <laughs> at least keep ourselves from drawing these three lands for the next three turns. Got a ton of cards in hand, though. We certainly... Certainly aren't out of it yet. Ah, oh, shit. One O and first strike. So he's gonna get to take down a shadow beast. Let's say we attack with everything except everything except the human. He blocks 4-4 with the Fang Blade. He blocks X-1 
eccentric farmer with the likes of Morbid Opportunist, and then the remaining one either takes down a Flame Channeler or a Smoldering Egg. That doesn't feel very good. I really don't like this game going long, but there's nothing we can do about this guy. Let's just give it to his whole squad. Oh shit. Have have more rares, dude. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh my god. Wow. I mean that's that's what I expect out of a seven win red deck, I guess, having He's played he played three rares on us. Okay. Hey, right, let's try again. We got two more shots at the final battle here. But yeah, that's usually what I want to see. I feel like I've been playing red. Um, some something good has happened, right? <laughs> it's just uh, th there's so many uh, just like bad, so many bad red cards. <laughs> Let's be real. So many of those cards aren't very good. All right. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if there was a way around it in that one. There's always some different lines we could have taken, but like right, starting kind of like right at the beginning with dealing with this flame channeler, we could have done things a little bit differently. But so what do we got happening here? That's reasonable. We got curve to four with the banner to play it. The red decks again. Oh my goodness. We got to try and get a trade on this Festival Crasher. I don't think this is like successful too frequently, but it's way better than uh, than, than just dropping Pestle with Wolf. And then I'm looking to add Donhart Mentor to the board here. I have to feel like if he didn't have a play that turn for... Um, for our block onto his thing, he probably doesn't have a play for our block onto Voldaren Stinger with the Donhart Mentor. And even if he does, it just gives us time, right? I have to imagine against a draw like this, we're really just hurting for time. But if he wants to spend the three mana, it gives the Stinger the bonus attack. I mean, he could have had a card and then he was just being derpy and played the Vampire Interloper first. Uh, so. It's not to say that there's not necessarily a card in his hand, right? <laughs> Wouldn't have been surprised if that, that stolen vitality was actually in there, but I think this is okay. Let's just be as mana efficient as we can. Can't block the stinger. We're just gonna have to have to accept that damage is coming in. Down to ten. I think we just have to have this go right. He's down to one card. Uh, we can threaten quite a bit of his board with the dual craft trainer. Uh, like he needs a, a 
you know, another good combat trick to protect the Festival Crasher from the Dual Craft Trainer. And then this does threaten, again, just like big lethals if he's going to be overly clever on his turn. So we'll see. I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good bluff to come in with the Festival Crasher, but I, I think we're just in a space to where we have to block it 100% of the time. And I also don't think we're ever winning the game by not attacking with this Cathar Commando. So if he's got it, he's got it. Okay, so far so good. Alrighty. Wonder what I'm not sure what that how to read into that as far as cards in his hand goes, but we just win here. We're gonna be a little bit short. Oh no, oh no, so I, th I thought we were going to get a coven, and I was I was completely wrong on that. Oh no. That was bad. I was like, alright, if we if we grow our dual craft trainer, we can totes get a coven here. Alright. Alright. Fine, just a little bit too slow to deal with that stuff. <sighs> alright, one more shot at the final battle. Let's see if we get taken down by vampires three times in a row. I feel like this should be like a pretty decent matchup. I'm not sure where that's going wrong in there. I mean, it certainly helps to be on the play, I guess, but... Hmm. hmm. Let's see if we can get the trophy. Yeah, I feel like we even got really lucky in that one on that on that turn when we blocked the festival crashers with our our Cathar and he had he probably had the the stolen vitality in hand. Uh, it would just been a that would have been a blowout at that point. Like he would have he would have trampled through. Uh, it, that would have made his his flame thing a f uh, seven attack and it have trampled through for six because we blocked it with a three one. That would have been a. An, an annihilation <laughs> as far as that game was concerned but all right it's the liliana avatar f jaw let's see if we can do it oh i hate hands like this but i, I think it's too good to to pass up it's, it's just like if if your first two and three draws aren't spells you're in such a shitty spot I think we're willing to trade with the party captain. He is not, though. Alright. We'll add our best unit. We just, like, can't block any of these things. Uh, I'm never blocking the party captain if he attacks. Okay. I assume he's given up on attacking if he's, if he's playing all this stuff pre-combat. Augur of Autumn, I forgot you. I forgot you were even in our deck. <laughs> welcome, welcome. I think that will be a play for next turn. What happens if we, I mean, if we flip? I think I'm okay with this. Our unit's better than his unit, but uh, I'm looking at this turn as just being a place where we're going to add Cathar Commando and then maybe play Might of the Old Ways if he tries to get clever with his attacking. Uh, 
We are going to have to like watch ourselves because he has this Gavany Tapper on the board, but I don't think he's getting attacks in here. The unfortunate thing with this is we don't have access to any more green. Uh, but I, I think this Augur of Autumn should be a... Oh, wow. Wow, he lets the Augur stay. Oh, man. Interesting. He's going to get a tap. He's going to get a big attack in. Ooh, we just have potential for so much card advantage here now. Oh, shit. <sighs> okay, okay. We know we have the answer to her on top of our deck, but not not something you're ever looking to see. And we have to do it now, right? He's covened. Would like love to get the combat trick out of this. Can we can we be that clever? Okay. Let's not let's not be that clever. <laughs> we just give it a bit of time here. I think we're, we're looking pretty strong on board. We're going to hit a Coven next turn with the Donhart Mentor. Uh, we, we just need time this game. All right, we can start doing stuff next turn. The Shadow Beast sightings looking decent. <laughs> okay. Beginning of combat. All right, no attacks. We'll, we'll definitely start attacking next turn. Glad we got to just pop off with this Augur of Autumn. I was afraid we weren't going to sh showcase how ridiculous this thing can be. <laughs> I think it is it is starting to be showcased, though. Okay, well, we gotta get in, start getting in with a little bit here. I, I think this is probably enough. Like, he's not at any real risk of dying anytime soon. We do have to worry about him, like, slapping these flyers onto the board. So I think this is okay. We can't uh, give Trample and play Shadow Beast Sighting this turn, but we can start doing that next turn.
Okay. Guess we're losing a Shadow Beast sighting. I think the same collection of units is good. Again, like, we can't attack with too much. Uh, he's he's going to be able to play cards on our stuff, but or, or have a big alpha strike back, but threatening the one mentor boost should be enough to, to help churn through a lot of this. He can attack with the Sun Gold Sentinel to take away our Shadow Beast sighting, but oh no, this can he can be unblockable with that, can't he? Kind of scary. It's coming in for five. I mean, we have Duel for Dominance on top, so that'll be good at some point, but it's a little scary here. We can technically lethal this next turn. We have Duel for Dominance on top, so we can't Duel for Dominance as Flyer. Dual Craft Trainer. Can we Lethal from here? Like, if we make a Shadow Beast... Do we, we don't have the mana to both... Yeah, we do. We have 10 mana. Say we make a Shadow Beast 7, that would be a 14. I don't really like it. I, I'm still kind of okay with this idea of um, making a duel for dominance play. He also has this trapper to tap whatever we... Well, he, he can't trap or tap anything this turn. I still, I, th I think we're going to be short. Like, say he, we attack... How many blockers does he have? One, two, three, four, five? One, two, three, four... Five, or we can get in for 14 and he blocks one two three four one two three four and then the shadow beast i think we're one damage short and we're also one mana short of trying to make a big duel for dominance play Spread that out. So yeah, I'm not really keen on making this dual craft trainer play. I, I think we need to just like trample something in here. And then duel for dominance down the sun gold sentinel. So we still die to a combat trick. No, the combat tricks will never kill us with the chapel shield geist. So let's do this. Let's Don Hart Mentor. Whichever one the veteran is on. That looks like this one. And I want to duel for dominance. So choose a creature you control, a creature you don't control, and the Sun Gold Sentinel. Yes, I'm sure. I'd like to pay one. And that tramples us in another point. It's just, like, if we have this dual craft trainer on board, he can just tap whatever we give double strike. So that play just doesn't really work. Now we should be able to Alpha Strike next turn and, and get a kill. Uh, 
All right, so now if we hit with everything, our Shadow Beasts are done. That leaves him with two units. That cancels out our Cathar Commando. So we're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then up to 11 with our Dawnheart Mentor. Then he has one card in hand. How scary is that? Don't quite like it. I guess the other thing we have to be mindful of is with this luminous phantasm, we could potentially like first strike down a unit and then have some additional damage problems that way. I think this is okay. He's gonna block one, tap one. Got four. We have the two Kathar commandos. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eleven. All right. Okay, that seemed a little a little closer than it needed to be, but <laughs> we got there. We got there in the end. Nice. So yeah, let's take a moment. We'll get this one. Uh, we'll get this one pulled up and talk about it a, a little bit more. Okay, so yeah, we see. There we go. We pushed ourselves into diamond. Go us. We'll hopefully hit mythic this month. And then <laughs> this was brutal. This was the draft deck I just quit on. It was a really weird white black deck that just did not turn out uh, how I hoped, and I just played a game and quit and was like, all right, we'll start, we'll start up a different one after that. Uh, but yeah, as far as this green-white deck goes in general, I mean, this is, it seems pretty straightforward these days. The, a lot of the cards that you're actually looking for in green-white, uh, again, you're trying to be really low to the ground, really aggressive, and then take advantage of these combat tricks. The premier combat trick being Flare of Faith, uh, but Might of the Old Ways also uh, doing a bit of work. And so the, the thing that we mainly talk about uh, as far as green-white goes is making sure that you have the right units in the early part of your curve. The big ones that you're looking for are Harvest Tide Sentry and Cathar Commando. Uh, the, the ones that you can kind of run into problems with are the uh, the less aggressive type units like Pestilent Wolf as to where it's just a 2-2 uh, this is more defensive than offensive, since um, you're hoping to be able to death touch it and trade up, uh, not so much trade it with your opponent's bear. And so uh, the big ones, again, Harvest Tide Sentry, Cathar Commando, uh, Candle Gro Candlegrove Witch is the other big one, the 2-2 with Coven that gets flying, uh, and that is kind of the core of your bears. Uh, thing number two that you kind of watch out for is it's very easy to get a big pile of two and three attack units, and these covens are particularly important to hit. Uh, and so you're looking for a way to find some zeros, ones, and fours. Uh, the kind of premier uh, ways to do that are showing up here in, in some degree, uh, we have the, the Donhart Mentor is an absolutely fantastic game closer. And even if it's not closing out games, it almost guarantees that you're going to have a coven. Uh, otherwise, you're looking for um, uh, Gavany Tapper, the zero attacker that taps stuff, extremely important. We didn't end up with any here, uh, but it is always quite good in these decks. And then you can look towards um, uh, Gavany Silversmith, and you can look towards things like Hound Tamer uh, as ways to kind of spread out plus one, plus one counters and pick and choose how you get your, your covens happening. Uh, the, the last thing I like to call out with this is you want some kind of way to really just smash and close out a game, whether or not that is like a uh, the way we're doing it here with dual craft trainers, uh, just some kind of way that you can uh, smash through a, a stalled board state. And so that's a great way to do it. Don Hart Mentor is a great way to do it. Um, but a lot of this, uh, a lot of these cards otherwise are, are just going to be filler once you've kind of filled in those two things. The really good two drops, the good combat tricks and flare faith, uh, and then a good game closer, and then a way to kind of pick up a coven. Covens aren't super important to hit, but you are going to want to be able to hit them. 
So yeah, as far as that goes, that was pretty good. As far as the draft goes, I, I think we handled this reasonably well. Uh, again, the Augur of Autumn, I'm glad it really like popped off in that last game. Uh, just, just seeing that one turn where we played like four creatures in a land <laughs> all in the same turn, uh, just bonkers, bonkers stuff you could do with the Augur of Autumn. This is just an extremely powerful card. I was glad to get to, to open up with it. Uh, I mean, I, I could understand people taking Phantom Carriages or Gale Drifters over it just due to the power of blue in this format, but uh, I, I'm really willing to uh, take a risk on an Augur of Autumn. Uh, on to pack two. Uh, this was kind of a sketch Digraph Rebirth, but if we did end up in green-black, uh, it is exceptionally good there, especially if you're able to piece together these combos of, like, Eccentric Farmer uh, to really load up your graveyard with stuff. And so you can kind of see the makings of a powerful green-black deck if we see uh, Augur of Autumn and then wheel the Grizzly Ghoul in pack two. If we start with the Digraph Rebirth and wheel the Eccentric Farmer, uh, that would be pretty powerful. I could see... Uh, like, I don't expect the cards like the Digaf Rebirth to come back. If we were trying to be, like, ultra, ultra greedy, I could see taking the Eccentric Farmer and then hoping the Rebirth tables, uh, because not very many people play green-black. It's a very uh, underperforming and underdrafted card pool. And so uh, that, like, you know, the Eccentric Farmer may have been the pick and then just kind of roll for it. But I think what happens with these, like, Digaf Rebirths is... You know, somewhere like pick six, someone's like, oh, there's a grizzly ghoul. I'm going to take it. I bet green black's open. And then pick seven, they're like, oh, shit, there's a digraph rebirth right behind it. And then those cards just never wheel. And so I'm okay with the rebirth here. I wouldn't fault you for coming in and taking a gale of a curse of surveillance. Or if you were the bro starting with gale drifter into gale drifter or phantom carriage into gale drifter, that's fine as well. I, com I completely see uh, the merits in that, given how good blue is. But... Uh, I, I still want to stick with our Augur of Autumn here, so I think that the, the Rebirth was okay. Uh, on to pack three. Uh, I think this is a very easy Shadow Beast sighting. We don't know what uh, kind of green deck we're going to land in, but uh, Shadow Beast sighting is my green common of choice, and so uh, I like pairing this up with the Augur. You know, Winterthorn Blessing can wheel. It's a little bit easier to see Winterthorn Blessings than uh, the green-black cards, although I do think blue-green blue -green may just be the best... Um, uh, green-based color combination in the format, given the blue is so strong. But happy enough with that. At pack three here, Defend the Celestis, I, I don't really like. Uh, if you take a, like, a look at our deck, I don't know how to make the deck list just come back up, but if like we didn't play the five drop and then the Defend the Celestis was the top of our curve, uh, okay with it in that sense, but it tends to be pretty expensive. And so uh, I was happy enough to take the chance on green-white. I could have seen an argument for taking the Unblinking Observer here, but uh, it just kind of feels like uh, uh, if things go wrong, uh, the, the Unblinking Observer is a pretty, you know, kind of wrong card to, <laughs> wrong card to be having. And so uh, I, I think that was okay, given how much blue we had already passed. And then we start getting ourselves locked into green-white uh, as the Don Hart Mentor shows up, certainly not taking a Pestilent Wolf here. Uh, and then we just continue on with our green white ways. I was pretty happy uh, with passing amongst all these candle traps. Uh, the, it's just if you don't have all a whole bunch of flyers, uh, then it tends to not be a great removal spell. Uh, but here, dual craft trainer again. These are uh, some serious game closers. Uh, a lot of decks just can't answer these. Uh, even like if you're playing, you know, with the candle traps. Candle traps don't stop it from passing out double strike. Ultimately, super powerful card. The second Dualcraft Trainer just locks us up as in being in green-white. So uh, I think it was pretty straightforward from there. Getting the late Cathar Commandos is good. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure I had no desire to draft something that wasn't green-white from this point forward. The Breeze Survivor is fine. Harvest Tide Sentry is our premier two-drop. These are all looking pretty good here. Tons and tons of just like red and black rolling through. But uh, I, I liked how this played out from this point on. Coil Creeper would have been kind of interesting if we were in blue-green. Oh, yeah, I forgot the red cards. I mean, we could have ended up uh, in the in the green-red deck. This is where it started to happen, right? Where there's nothing green or white to take, so we take the Moonrager Slash, and then we take a... Uh, we have the option for the Elementalist, but pass. And then we start seeing Seize the Storm, Flame Channeler. Like, th this deck is kind of coming together here. I completely forgot about this piece of it happening as we got to the end, but uh, I think we could have realistically pushed ourselves into that if we saw like a good spell here if we saw like a, a a tempest storm whatever this thing is called seize the storm 
in this pack were a, a Moon Rager slash, we would have had like a real decision to be making. But the Brigand is good, but he's pretty off theme from the red green spells deck. And then nothing made us feel bad about it as we pushed forward here. Just a ultra powerful card in the Hound Tamer. Uh, no red cards here outside of the Festival Crasher. But at this point, you know that green red's not happening. And so maybe one day we'll get to see that with the Shadow Beast sightings and all of the green red cards, but that day is not today. So I think we do have a handful of rewards to click on. I know, uh, I think I skipped over it in the last video. Uh, and so I think we've got a, a few packs lined up for some some clicking. Oh man, I don't, I don't know what's in Strixhaven. Yeah, our first uncommon. What we got? God's Willing. Creature gains protection of a color of your choice. Oh, that's a reprint. That was in... Um, <laughs> that was in Theros back in when I played back in the day. I was like, I thought that card was really familiar. That was Nutsos in Limited. It's probably good that they, they pushed it to rare in that sense. I'm not reading all that text. And then let's see what's up with our Innistrad packs. Okay, Ludovic. Reasonable Limited card. What is this? Oh, this guy's fairly annoying. We've run into this thing a few times. Very, very powerful limited card. Turns out drawing a bunch of cards is good. <laughs> I don't know if you're if you're familiar with that concept, but some something to know, drawing cards is good. Okay, what do we got here? Dinnick. Sure. You gotta be pretty close to just the full set now. Another suspicious stowaway. I'm curious, is there a way to filter through? Um, unowned cards. I'll we'll have to go through and see. Slaughter Specialist. And the last one. Amazing, I'm sure. Wake to Slaughter. That was the, the first time I'd seen that today, and so that was kind of kind of odd. But yeah, I wonder, can we click on Collection? Is there a way to see uh, Filters? Not, not Collected. And Estrad. Not collected four copies. Will that work? Three copies. Two copies. I don't. I don't know what this does. One copies. Not collected whatsoever. That's it. Just these two. But this has to be the ones that we have zero copies of. I know that we don't have uh, uh, that full of a collection. Why even? Why even put these here? This doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> do we do collect it this way? Three copies? Is this the way you have to go back and do it? Uh, what a dumb filter. We're getting close. We're getting close, though. I see how that works. Stuff we only have one copy of mostly looks to be mythic. Miss it out on some Vanquish the Hordes. I mean, on the one copy stuff, or I guess we could, can we see zero? I guess zero would just be unowned. Let me see. Not collected. What? Whatever. Okay. So missing out on Catildas. Almost crafted this a while ago when we were first just like tooling around with Celestia humans. Uh, but didn't get around to it. Poppet Stitcher's whatever. I'm sure there could be some kind of combo with Poppet Stitcher, but the one copy cards, like we're not missing out on much, right? Arl in the Pax Hope I would like to have. Uh, Vanquish the Vanquish the Hordes kind of whatever. So not missing out on those too much. I don't think Sunstorm Phoenix is going to see uh, too much constructed play. Lear sees a lot of play in Constructed, but we aren't close to having the uh, the Time Warp deck. Otherwise, not too much here. Galvanic Iteration's a big one, I guess. Both of these are big in the Time Warp deck, which we haven't been trying to craft towards. So, fair enough not having those. Up to three, the things where we're almost done with. Lots of lots of quality stuff here, but the big ones being we just uh, we're only one land away uh, from having it. Got three to fairies is pretty sweet. So yeah, I mean, we're pretty close to having that complete collection. Uh, that's that's really nice in terms of wrapping it all up. Anywho, uh, anyways, that's going to be it for today. I hope you all did learn how to take the uh, the dueling dueling deuce, you know. Maybe learned a thing or two along the way. Had a good time watching. Uh, this is Bust, and we thank you for being here. <laughs>